around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Seven is a significant number for a variety of reasons. One highly entertaining reason we'd like to remind you of is the magic number of top daytime dramatic serials only the CBS radio network sends your way each Monday through Friday. No less than seven of America's longtime favorite dramas. Comedy abounds with The Couple Next Door and drama with the light touch on the second Mrs. Burton. Other top CBS radio dramas enjoyed by millions include The Romance of Helen Trent, Whispering Streets, and the right to happiness. Hours of absorbing entertainment every weekday come from these top dramas presented exclusively by CBS Radio and brought to you as an important part of the different sound of this station. me to the house. You've been beat. Uh, Who done it, Paul? The house. Fetch me there, boy. Sure. Sure, Paul. I'll do that right now. Oh, oh. 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 <sighs> Can you make it on your feet? Hey, you'd rather I'd carry you, Paul? Oh, I... I can walk... Who done this to you? Just get me to bed, boy. You know who done it? You seen him before? Yeah, I, I know him. Tell me his name, Paul. No, ain't no use. You're knowing. Oh, sure it is. Sure, I'll go after him. No, oh, you, you ain't going no place. Well, then there's the law, Paul. It ain't right for him to go all free. No need with me, boy. I ain't never had no need for the law. But, Paul... I said, leave it be. You go ahead. Open the door for me. I'll walk in by myself. <laughs> What can I do for you? I come to see the marshal. Well, you come to the right place. I don't see him here. Well, of course you don't see him, because he ain't here. <laughs> he coming back? <clears throat> I'm sure he's coming back. 
And we'll have to wait for him. All right, son. Have a seat. Thanks. <clears throat> might be that I could help you. Me being the marshal's assistant, you might say. Oh, wait. Oh, sure. I just thought I might maybe could save us some time before he got I here. I said I wanted to see the marshal. Well, all right, son. All right. Ain't no call to be so huffy about it, all right. Oh, Mr. Dillon, I, I'm glad you come. Oh, uh, you got trouble, Chester? It ain't exactly trouble, but this young fellow is mighty all-fired serious about seeing you. I, I couldn't do nothing for him at all. Uh, is that so? Uh, you want to see me, son? Yeah, Marshal. Yeah, I sure do. Oh, what's your name? Jess Burris. Burris? Now, you Luke's son? Yes, sir, I am. Well, what can I do for you? I want you to arrest the man that beat my pa. You can do that, can't you, Marshal Dillon? Now, you better tell me more about it. Yeah, well, I, I found him yesterday, laying down by the creek, all beat and bloody. I'd have come sooner, but he needed tending. Oh, did he tell you who did it? No, sir. No, he wouldn't. But I know right enough. It was Smed Moley. But if your pa wouldn't tell you, how do you know? I've been asking questions. See, pa had some bad dealings with Smed, Marshal. He seen him here in Dodge yesterday morning and called him down good. He called him a cheat and a liar and a horse thief. Oh, pa can give it to you good when he's of a mind. That's right, Mr. Dillon. It happened right out there on Front Street while you was over in Hayes City. Mr. Burris really give it to him good, all right. Yeah, and Smith got himself liquored up and come out to our place and beat up Paul. He might have died, Marshal. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, Jess. Your father's a good man. You can arrest Smith, can't you, Marshal Dillon? Well, yes, I can arrest him if uh, if your Paul swear that he's the man. Oh, he ain't going to do that, Marshal. Well, why not? Is he afraid? Paul ain't afraid of nothing. That's most of the trouble. Well, how's that? Well, he ain't never needed to call on nobody for help. He don't figure to start now. <laughs> He's root stubborn. Well, there's not much I can do to change that. Maybe not, Marshal. But maybe you could stop a killing. Now, you figure that this isn't the last of it, then, huh? No. No, it sure ain't the last of it. Unless you lock Smed Moley up for a while. All right, Jess, huh? I'll go talk to your pa. talk to you. Come on in, Marshal. I'm back here. Well, sorry to see you laid up, Luke. Hey, a mend. What are you doing out this way? Well, I, uh, I heard you were off your feed. You didn't come to pay no sick call, Marshal. Uh, no, I, I guess I didn't look. I was hoping uh, you'd help me out. How would that be? I need you as a witness, Luke, as soon as you're able to travel. Witness? For what? Witness against Smed Moley. Uh, I told the boy to leave it be. Just as trying to protect you, Luke, and see that there's no more trouble. I don't need no help. I ain't never needed no help. Looks like you might have used some yesterday. Uh, he jumped me when I wasn't ready for him. But I can handle Moley, Marshal. Don't you worry about that. You let me lock him up and you won't have to. The law has... The a... law. I come out here before the law, Marshal. Maybe, but times have changed. Luke. Not for me, they ain't. When I come out here, man had to do his own settling. With the land, the Indians... Well, whatever stood in the way of his carving out a place. Folks learned to live and die without the law. Yeah, and some of them died when they didn't have to. Uh, how a man dies is his own business. Now, yeah. if he's the only one dying. Marshal, 
You got something to arrest me for? You gonna take me in? Uh, you know better than that, Luke. Well, then, Marshal, I sure think you will leave me alone and get along. Locking Molly up might save you a lot of trouble, Luke. I'll handle my own trouble. All right. All right, you handle it. But there may come a time when I'll have to move in. I ain't never needed the law yet. You better hope you won't be needing it from now on. must be pretty good. Oh? How's that? You're usually in here earlier than this. Yeah. Well, it's not that business is good, I can tell you that. Uh Matter of fact, Kitty, I'm having a hard time selling the law. Uh, What do you mean? Old man Burris. He got beat half to death yesterday. And he won't let me haul in the fellow that did it. Mad Molly. Yeah, it's Mad Molly. How did you know? Everybody knows. He's been here at the bar all day bragging about it. How the old man got uppity with him and how he fixed it. Oh, yeah, he's still here. Down at the far end there. Yeah. I see him. Well, I guess I better have a talk with him. All right, man. Nothing you can do, Marshal. I seen the boy. What boy? Luke's boy, Marshal. <laughs> Big fella like him nearly to crying. <laughs> you take to beating him too, like you did the old man? Oh, sure not, Marshal. Sure not. He feels bad enough. Uh-huh. Now, you know why he feels so bad, Marshal. I suppose you tell me. Uh, he feels so bad because he come running to you for help and he can't get none. Because his old man won't take no help from the law. Well, that's lucky for you. <laughs> we got us a big marshal out here, and he can't do nothing. Molly. <laughs> well, you know that's true, marshal. You can't arrest me if the old man don't say so. <laughs> and he ain't going to be saying so. Well, that's the old man's business. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I'll tell you something. If you ever go out there again, he means to take care of it. <laughs> I ain't worried. You should be. Because if the old man doesn't handle you, I will. Um, well, Marshal, you can. Yes, Molly, I can. But if you're smart, you won't make me prove it. <laughs> Got no business coming out here no more? Oh, see, me, I got business here. Unfinished business. What do you want? I want to see your old man. You seen him enough? <laughs> yeah, that's the way I figured it, too. I figured I'd seen him enough. But I've been hearing different. What do you mean? Been hearing from folks around town your paw been talking unkindly about me. Downright unkindly. How'd you expect him to talk? Well, I figured I closed his mouth some other day, boy. Pa ain't afraid of you. No, no, I guess he ain't yet. I guess I got to show him some more. He, you ain't going after him again. Well, now, you ain't figuring this to... Well, you got a gun, ain't you, boy? And I can use it. Hmm. All right, boy. And you got the drop on me. I'll just ride off. You shouldn't have threatened me, boy. Here you are. You coward. 
You dirty collar. Cash. Cash. Cash, what's happened? Molly. Shot me. Oh, what a murdering, thieving. Shot my boy and rode away. Next time I see him, I'll kill him, sure. Cash. Yes, sir. Are you hurt bad, boy? Uh, oh, it, uh, it ain't nothing, Cash. Uh, nothing at all. Now, I'll, I'll get you to the dark and he'll fix you up in no time. Don't you fret none. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll go and fetch the wagon. Chester, seems to me you've been sitting here most of the morning. I've had to step over you every time I went in or out of the office. Oh, well, I may have dozed off once or twice. Yeah, yeah, you may have. But you said yourself it's been a slow morning, Mr. John. I figured I might as well rest up so as to be ready in case something happened. Yeah, looks like it might be going to happen right now. Why, what do you mean? That's old Luke Burris driving that wagon, isn't it? Yes, I guess he is. Ah, he must be feeling better. Well, he may be, but there's somebody in the wagon bed who isn't feeling so good. I declare, you're right, Miss Jones. There is somebody stretched out in there. Yeah. Look. Look, Burris. He ain't even looking at you, Mr. Duke. Well, that's his boy. He's got there. Yeah. Come on, let's give him a hand. <laughs> Talk to him, Jess. I can get him if you tell me, Jess. I can lock him up this time. Yeah. Lock him up. Now, you tell me his name. He ain't got no right to pester you, Jess. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell him nothing. I, I want to tell him, Paul. Marshal. Yeah, Jess. It, it, it was moly. Smith, Molly again. You, you get him this time. Yeah, I'll get him. And then, oh. Jess, he's gone, Matt. I'm sorry, Luke. I, I did the best I could. I've seen you try to save him, Doc. I thank you. Luke. I still ain't got nothing to say to you, Marshal. I could have asked that you'd let him die in peace. I'm sorry you feel that way, Luke. But I had to step in. This is murder. Now, I gotta get into this now, whether you want me to or not. I can't stop you, Marshal. No. No, you can't stop me. But I'll tell you something. What's that? Nothing's changed. I can't stop you from coming into this thing. But we don't need you, Marshal. Jess and me, we don't need you any more than we ever did. We can take care of our own. I 
I've been kind of hankering to go back to Texas for some time now, but this sure ain't the way I'd like to make the trip. Uh-huh. Trailing a man for a day and a night can sure wear a fella down. Ain't that right, Mr. Jones? No. Wouldn't be so bad if a body didn't have to keep his eyes so open every minute. Yeah, I know that's particularly hard on you, Chester. Well, you got to keep looking out for so many things that you don't get to enjoy the scenery none at all, hardly. You're not missing much in this part of town. No, I don't know, Mr. Jones. I, I, I kind of like it out here. It's so nice and flat. And hot and dry. Well, sure, but you can just see you forever. You got to admit that, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, you're right. I got to admit that. There's nothing in the way. There, you see? That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. How long you reckon it'll take us to catch that smed mole, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. We may not catch him at all. Oh, my gracious me, we'll catch him all right. You said yourself the trail was nice and clear as can be. Yeah, it's too clear. What do you mean by that? We're not the only ones following us. You mean there's somebody else that's trailing him? Yeah, he's got about a half a day's start. You think it's that old Luke Burris? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Well, he just ain't got good sense to keep on with a thing like this, does he? Well, he thinks he's right, Chester. It's awful hard to talk sense to a person who thinks he's right. I suppose you're right at that. What county, Mr. John? Seems like it's a shack stuck way out here. Yeah. Now let's head for it. Keep your eyes open. Yes, I am. making this trip. I told you, Luke, when it's murder, it's my business. Well, there ain't no need. Well, we'll see. I already seen you. What do you mean? Come inside, Marshal. Come on, inside. Come on, Chester. Why? Why, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Stand back, Burris. Sure, Marshal. I'm all done. Smad moly. He's hung him right here inside. Yeah. I told you, Marshal, I ain't got no need for the law. He's been dead quite a spell. Yeah, since sunup. All right, Chester. You, you better start digging. We'll have to bury him. Yes, sir. You should listen to me, Marshal. I meant it when I said we took care of our own, that we had no need for the law to do it. Yeah. Now the law has to take care of you. Yeah, and that don't matter now. My boy's dead, and I took care of the man that killed him. I took care of it, Marshal, like we always done, without no law. Yeah, you did that all right. And your boy wouldn't have had to die at all if you'd let me move in in the first place. All right, come on, Luke. You can help Chester dig the grave. Like you helped dig the grave for Jess. Directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Dick Crenna, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Hawkins is Kitty. This is the CBS Radio Network.